Okay, we'll get started. We're going to be uh, continuing in our verse-by-verse -verse study of uh, Galatians. And so we left off with Galatians, uh, we did uh, up to verse 14, so we'll pick up in verse 15 this week. And so what we're going to be is, uh, we're going to just review quick uh, Paul's, Paul's discussion or Paul's argument in Galatians chapter 3. Uh, verses 1 through 5, Paul uh, asked uh, the Galatians questions that he already knows the answers to. We're talking about is it faith or is it law? Is it, is it by the spirit or is it by flesh? And so he was doing that in the first couple verses, uh, verses uh, 1 over through verse 5. Is it by, uh, by the Spirit or by flesh? And he was asking the Galatians questions. He knew the answers to already. But this was for their benefit that they would learn how to react and to think better to what was going on around them. That they were being deceived. And then in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 to 9, we studied about the example of Abraham and his simply believing God. And that it was accounted to him for righteousness when he was in un uncircumcision. And that uh, those that be of faith are also blessed with Abraham. So Paul went to the example of Abraham, explaining that you know Abraham in uncircumcision was blessed, not by the works of the law, but by faith. And so we saw that in chapter uh, 3, verses 6 through 9. Then as we continued in ch uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 14, we saw that the law brings a curse too. If you're going to try to obey the law of Galatians, then um, what those blessings you're trying to get, it also brings a curse. And the curse is, is death. It's not justification. And Christ became that curse for us. Uh, so when you, when you believe the gospel, you get the spirit through faith. Uh, and you don't want that curse. You, you, that curse is something you know, Christ became the curse for us. So with that, we'll pick up in verse 15. And uh, we'll open up in a word of prayer. And go forth into Galatians chapter 3. And we'll just do the next five verses for tonight. And uh, these verses are going to cover the unchanging nature of God's covenant with Abraham. And that the law was given because of man's sin and transgression. Uh, meant to confine all under sin until God's kingdom promises come to pass. So we're going to learn the purpose of the law. You know, what, what does it do and, and how does it work? You know, does when the law comes about, does that eliminate the previous promises or do the promises continue to play out so we'll see that tonight uh, so uh, heavenly father lord we're thankful for all spiritual blessings and heavenly places that we have as members of your body and that we go forth and see souls saved for your glory and that we continue to get the gospel of grace and that we continue to have paul as our pattern do all this for your glory amen, amen. so as we go into chapter three Verse 15, Paul's continuing on his uh, discussion, talking about the unchanging nature of God's covenant with Abraham. And he's saying, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. So he's talking about how you know, the principles of mannerism, mannerisms of men, um, you know, concerning how covenants are made you know, between men. So what he's saying, he's saying, you know, I speak after the manner of men. He said, Let, let's take this as an example of how, you know, how men work, after the manner of men. And he says, though it be but a man's covenant, you know, if, they, if we're not talking about Abraham or, or Moses, and we're not talking about covenants made between God and man, let's just talk about a man and a man, and the covenants they make. And he says, Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, uh, no man disannulleth or added thereto. So, uh, if, if someone makes a promise, a covenant, between one man and another man, and if that's confirmed, then you're not going to start adding things onto it. If you, if you confirm with somebody that, you know, uh, just one man and another man, that... I promise, based on this covenant, based on this promise, that uh, if I pay you fifty dollars, you're going to bring in uh, uh, a bunch of uh, egg rolls, and you're going to make the egg rolls, and that's my promise to you. That's here's the money for it, and we promise one human being to another human being that this is going to be done. 
and maybe we'll sign on it, we'll write something down, and I give you the $50, you'll bring me the egg rolls. Now, what, however that is, that's between two people. And now if it's confirmed, and it's written down, I can't back out of that, because it's been confirmed. We're just using a basic example, but I can't say why well, I, I want... I want, once you, once you bake it and once you have everything done and ready to go, I can't say, well, I don't want it anymore. I want my money back. Because what we're seeing here in verse, although that does happen these days, but what we're, the point in verse 15 says, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Pretty much what you're seeing is the nature of mankind is if one person makes a promise with another person and it's confirmed, they're pretty much locked in, you know, one man to another man. And if you and if you disannul it or if you add to it, you're 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 pretty much uh, hurting yourself, or you're hurting another party if you don't together agree with that. And that's that's just a promise between man and man. So that's the whole point we're saying in verse fifteen. So he's saying, brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or add it thereto. So we're going back to Abraham in verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to, and to uh, thy seed, which is Christ. So he's saying to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And so that goes back to Genesis 22, verse 18. And so what we're seeing, he's saying, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. So we're talking, we're going again about what we were studying last time with Abraham and the promises that were given to him. We studied last time that God gave promises to Abraham, talking about how of, of Abraham and his seed will, will you know, nations be flowing through them, will nations come out of them, and, uh, you know, He'll have you know, descendants of the sand of the sea, and that uh, they'll bless. He'll bless those that bless him and curse those that curse him, and it'll be pretty much from Abraham and his seed will come all, all these promises. If we look at Genesis uh, twenty-two, verse eighteen, So this is the this is the promise that God is talking about concerning a uh, verse sixteen. And he says, Not to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And so what we'll see here in Genesis twenty two eighteen, it says, And in thy seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And so, you know, you see that if you go back up one verse, it says that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply the seed of the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And so you're seeing, you know, these, these promises given to Abraham, and it's not through the law. God's giving these promises to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. You'll see tons of them in the book of Genesis. Before the law even shows up in the book of Exodus, in Genesis, God's saying to Abraham, I'm promising you these things. And I'm promising you because, you know, because you believe back in Genesis 15. You, you believe me, and I'm accounting that to you as righteousness. So I'm promising you these things. Irregardless, I'm promising you these things. And so you're seeing this take place. And so... When we go to verse 16, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed, you know, Jake, Abraham and uh, Isaac and so on, were the promises made. It says, He saith not unto seeds as of many, and uh, he says, unto many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. So uh, we're seeing, you know, because Ab Abraham had some, had some seeds, some descendants, which promises didn't go to. And we know uh, which descendant of um, Esau and, and uh, everything else, and not just uh, Esau, but the Ishmael, he didn't get the promises, but he did come from Abraham. 
So it's not seeds as of many, but uh, so we see that thing from verse 16. Uh, you say not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So you're seeing, uh, you know, another, um, that through, uh, thy seed, which is Christ, that through, uh, through faith, you're seeing, uh, through the seed, through the prophetic seed, you're seeing uh, Isaac and Jacob, and these are the seeds that are, are occurring through the prophetic program. When you get to what Paul's talking about in verse 16, he's going all the way back to verse 15, where you're seeing brethren. And these are the people who trusted the gospel by faith. So now, when it comes to the mystery program, you've got brethren who are believing the gospel by faith, which goes back to the... the man behind the plan, so to speak, and I'm saying this in quotation marks, which goes back to Christ to begin with, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is why he's saying in verse 16, uh, he saith not uh, to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Christ is the, is the one who is all about faith, you know, the, you know, the doctrines to believe in to, to begin with. And so we're seeing this here, uh, their their seed via faith. So there's no when you see this if then law principles in the mystery program. There's no if then law principles occurring in the book of Genesis. But when you get to Moses, is when you start having those if if then if you do this then this will happen. If you do this then this will happen. You're not seeing that with Abraham. You're seeing God is promising Abraham this will happen. Because he believed the Lord and was accounted unto him for righteousness. Back in Genesis 15, 6. So, obviously that take place there. The promises of land and nation and etc. comes by faith. It comes in Genesis 12. It comes in Genesis 17. We're seeing it in Genesis 22. And this is all not due to law. It's due to promise. And it's all due by faith. So, I would see that there. And, uh, and we know from when we study the book of Matthew that Christ is a uh, descendant from Abraham. So when we see that he's, he's from the seed of Abraham, the seed line, we study that from those generational things in Matthew chapter 1, that Christ, no matter how you want to place him on the map, Christ will always be from Abraham, and yet he was before Abraham. He's of that seed line. So, we see that from verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not to, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So all that is spoken to, specifically to the Galatians. So, and so when we get to verse 17, it says, And this I say, that the covenant, that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So what you're seeing in verse 17, as Paul continues on his, his discussion or his, his argument, his, his point that he's trying to make, is what he's saying is he's talking about that nature of the covenant he made with Abraham. He's saying that the, the, the point of the nature of the covenants that you're reading about with Abraham in Genesis 12 and in Genesis 22 is that it's all about promise. It's all about faith, and it has nothing to do with law. And this is the point that he's trying to drive home to the Galatians. So he's saying in verse 17, And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, now he's talking about the law, the law, which was 430 years after, you know, after Abraham, after Genesis 12 and Genesis 22, and now in the law, which is after all this, you know, about 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So you've got the promises that you can read about in Genesis, and then 430 years later comes the law, and, it, and Paul is saying, just because the law shows up later in the book of Exodus doesn't 
make the promises disappear. The law is not greater than the promises to where the promises are no longer going to show up anymore and that everything is only about law and all about law. It is the dispensation of law. But it's not so much about law that the promises are no longer valid. The promises are still going to come about and they are, and, and Israel is going to go into their kingdom. And so the law does show up. The law is given to Moses. And uh, Paul's saying that you know Israel is given the law via Moses, but those promises were still given to Abraham in Genesis. So don't think that the law is going to make the promises given to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob disappear. They're still there. The law is there too, but the law is there for a specific purpose, and we're about to find out why that was given in the first place. Because first you had in Genesis... Promise after promise. You're going to have land. You're going to have people. You're going to have a kingdom. You're going to be a nation. You're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to multiply more than the sand of the sea. It's all going to happen. And then the next thing you know in the book of Exodus, you have 613 points of law. And what Paul is saying, don't think just because the law showed up in Exodus 430 years late, you know, after the fact, those promises are somehow dead or not as important or not really there, or not really effective, they're still just as valid and effective and good to go as they ever were. So, and you see that in verse 17. So it says, uh, confirmed of God in uh, Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul. It can't make it go away. It cannot disannul. That it should make the promise of none effect. It can't make the promises of none effect. So verse 18 says, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So he's saying about that inheritance, that inheritance of the land, the inheritance of the kingdom that you'll see about in the book of Revelation, the inheritance of, uh, of having people and earthly dominion, and everything you read about it, Genesis, all the way from Genesis to 12, to Genesis 17, to Genesis 22, all those different things, what you're seeing is, is uh, has nothing to do with the law. Because what you're seeing in verse 18 is, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. And you're reading all about promise in the book of Genesis. Promise is where it's at, is what Paul's saying. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. And so that's what you're reading in verse 18. It's all about those promises you can see in Genesis. That's where it's at. Because where Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness, there's where the promises are coming in. That's where the prophetic program starts kicking off in the book of Genesis. So then the most important question is verse 19. It says, Wherefore then serve it the law? What's it there for? If you've got all these promises, what's, what's the law showing up for in the book of Exodus if all these promises are happening in the book of Genesis? And wherefore serve it the law? What's the point? So he says, wherefore, in verse 19, wherefore then serve it the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So as we look at verse 19, what he's saying here is, wherefore then serve it the law? You know, a very important question. You're reading about promises in Genesis. You see the law in Exodus, and then you see it, you know, being uh, impacted or carried out or, or made to go forward from the Exodus on. 613 points of law. Well, what's it doing there? Well, why did you do it? Why, why is it, wh wherefore serve it the law? And he says... Uh, verse, was it 19? Yeah, 19. Uh, it was added because of transgressions. It's there to, there's so much sin going on, so much uh, sin that was happening in the camp, in the wilderness, with Israel, with those people that came out of the Exodus. There's so much sin happening that there had to be something to confine those, those millions of people and to confine the nation. That there just, there had to be there had to be uh, 
something to confine them. There had to be rules and regulations set up for these people until the promises would come out and play out in which they do in the book of Revelation. And so on. And so what we see there it says, and it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So what you're seeing, what you're seeing is that uh, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, is that um, it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So it's added, and it's added until the seed should come. And the seed, you know, we see of all this coming, you see the, the revealing or the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the ages to come. And that's when those promises get fulfilled, and that's when Israel gets their land, and that's when Israel becomes the head and not the tail, and that's when Israel gets everything that they were promised in the book of Genesis. But those promises are still going to be carried out, fulfilled, and everything that was promised will, will play out. So, we see that there in verse 19. It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So we see that there, that uh, that mediator being uh, Moses concerning the law, that the the mediator there is Moses. It was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator, since we're talking about law. And so that's verse 19. And so... As we keep going through this, we're seeing that but Paul is making the point to the Galatians, and he's, and he's telling them, you know, the law was given because of man's sin and transgression, but it's meant to just confine those under the law. It's not meant to eliminate promise. Promise and faith is what's the important factor. And Galatians, if you're trying to live by the law, you're not getting the point of what was going on with Abraham, whose seed you're trying to be by law. So Galatians, you're living in a very confusing fashion, and you're not getting the point. So that's what Paul's point is. As, as we go through Galatians chapter 3, and any, any part of this is good to show any church, because any, any church that reads Galatians chapter 3, at least they should be doing Bible studies on the book of Galatians. You would think this would destroy anything they're doing. That would be the point. If any church is actually studying the book of Galatians, rightly divided, they should tear apart their tithing or tear apart their water baptism or tear apart anything that they're actually trying to do which is incorrect. But most likely, they're adding the book of Matthew into Galatians or the book of John into the book of Galatians. And it's even the book of Galatians could get mixed up if they don't know how to rightly divide. So even a book as clear as this will start to get altered and twisted. And so we see that there. So verse 20 goes on to say, Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So what we're seeing here is because uh, a mediated, uh, this is now a mediator, verse 1, now a mediator is not a mediator of one. Because when it comes to a mediator, what you're seeing is that a mediation takes two parties. It says now a mediator is not a mediator of one. And so, as you see in this in this mediation, it's you can't have a mediator and then have just one party. There has to be two parties that a mediator is mediating between. And so, a good verse for this, if you look at First Timothy chapter two, verse five. First Timothy chapter two, verse five. And what we'll see here says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So when it comes to a mediator, uh, specifically today in the dispensation of grace, you know, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So that mediator that we have today between two parties is God and man, mankind. And that one and only mediator is Jesus Christ. So that this verse... 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, should eliminate Roman Catholicism, should eliminate most religions, should eliminate 
a lot of what's going on in religion or, or denominationalism today because a lot of people run to a lot of different people to be their mediator between God and man. And uh, the pastor or the um, church or the priest or the church celebrity is not going to be your mediator between God and man. Only the Lord Jesus Christ, and by trusting his death, burial, and resurrection, will you be saved by the one and only mediator between God and man. So as we go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 20, he say, Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Now we can read in Scripture where God, where God is one. Israel will say, you know, God is, you know, God is one. Uh, but we can also see he's his own authority. He's his own representative. If we look at uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23, Isaiah 45, verse 23. And so what we see in the first couple of words there, the Lord says, uh, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth, in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. The Lord says, I have, sworn, I have sworn by myself. He's his, own, he's his own authority. He's his own representative. So when it talks about a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, you can, you can trust that God is his own in the person of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is a mediator between God and man because Jesus Christ is God. God can swear by himself, as you see as the spiritual example we're using from Isaiah chapter 45. So going back to Galatians in chapter 3, we've seen how Paul's laying it out what the purpose of the law is. There's promises given to Abraham and his seed in, in Genesis. And just because the law shows up in Exodus, it doesn't eliminate the promises that will be fulfilled by the time you get to those other books in the ages to come, specifically Revelation where all those promises come out and are laid out to uh, Israel and, and the faithful remnant. And as those promises are completely laid out, they're all given, uh, all those promises are, are, are come to fruition, they're, they come to be fulfilled. And so what you'll see is that as, as they come to be played out, it's not all about the law. The law is just there to confine those that are faithful in that time period. And even that... With, with Israel's New Testament, they come and uh, Israel's New Testament is written in their hearts rather than something that the Old Testament that was given you know, to God by uh, Moses, the hand of angels, that uh, even the law is written in their hearts so they can actually obey the law. Israel can. So even that gets supernaturally taken care of. So... So we see that there, and so with that, we'll stop here in uh, Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 20. We'll pick up on the next couple verses. Looks like we've got about, we've got about nine more verses to go in chapter 3, but we want to make sure we take this uh, careful. We want to go careful with this uh, bit by bit, because this is a very important chapter where it talks about a lot of important verses. A lot of important points where Paul is making sure to teach the Galatians that it's all about faith and specifically by promise where Abraham did right. It was about, it was about faith and God took care of Abraham by promise in the book of Genesis and that um, today in the dispensation of grace, it's going to be about faith where you get um, the blessings and the, uh, and the spirit and the salvation and to go any other way, specifically by law, the purpose of law was to restrict those, to confine them, to make them do uh, righteous performance until the promises are fulfilled. So with that, we'll stop there, and uh, we'll continue next week in uh, Galatians chapter uh, 3. We'll pick up in verse 21, and uh, uh, with that... Uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, close in a word of prayer 
uh, for tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for this uh, day of grace, and we're thankful for your word rightly divided, whereas we study your word and we go through it, uh, making sure that we uh, are, are thankful for all spiritual blessings and that we uh, rightly divide your word. Amen. Amen.